Furthermore, a final point on some of the goals of Islam. One will readily note that all of the goals of Islam are highly interconnected. This is quite logical. Actually, they all flow from the foundation of true monotheism. When a person embodies the teachings of Islamic monotheism, he then frees himself from worshipping anybody else or anything else. Furthermore, he will then lead his life in this world in a way that is best for society and civilization. He will work for justice and ensure that neither he nor others wrong others. In the end, he will find true peace and will be able to pass that along to others. But all of this must start with the true internalization of pure monotheism, where one worships and submits to Allah, sincerely and devoutly practicing the religion of Allah in this life. Thus, clearly, once a person understands, accepts and applies the true concept of Islamic monotheism concept in his life, the other aspects are achieved as corollaries to this main goal. On the other hand, without true monotheism, the other goals cannot be achieved, even at a superficial level. Hence, it is understandable that, in essence, all of the Quran is concerning Tawheed or pure monotheism. The commentator on one of the famous expositions of Islamic belief, al aqidu al Taha'oya, also noted that all of the Quran is actually a discussion of pure monotheism, Tawheed. Most of the chapters in the Quran are concerned with the two types of Tawheed, 54, in fact, every chapter in the Quran, is concerned with Tawheed. The Quran either reports about Allah's names and attributes. This is the Tawheed that one must have knowledge about and that is reported. Or the Quran calls to his worship, associating no partner with him, in that worship, and abandoning any other idol other than him. This is the Tawheed of intention and will. Or the Quran orders, prohibits or commands, his, obedience. These are essential aspects of Tawheed and part of its completeness. Or the Quran reports about how, Allah, honors the people, who adhere to, Tawheed and what he does for them in this world and what he graciously bestows on them in the hereafter. That is the reward for, adhering to, Tawheed. Or, the Quran, reports about the polytheists and how he treats them in this world and what kind of punishments they will receive in the end. That is the punishment for those who abandon the aspects of Tawheed. Sadr al-Din Abu Alis al-Hanafi, Shar al-Taha or Yafi al aqidu al-Salafiyya, Fairfax, Virginia, Institute of Islamic and Arabic Sciences in America, forthcoming, p. 35. The Beauties of Islam At this time in Islam's history, when the entire religion is being judged by the actions of a few, it is appropriate to step back from the glare of the media spotlight and examine the beauties that infuse the way of life known as Islam. There is greatness and splendor in Islam that is often overshadowed by actions that have no place in Islam or by people who speak about topics they only vaguely understand. Islam is a religion, a way of life that inspires Muslims to try harder, reach farther and act in a manner that is pleasing to those around them and most importantly pleasing to their creator. The beauties of Islam are those things that are part of the religion and make Islam stand out. Islam answers all of humankind's eternal questions. Where did I come from? Why am I here? Is this really all there is? It answers these questions with clarity and in a beautiful way. So then, let us begin our journey and discover and ponder over the beauties of Islam. 1. The answers to all your questions about life are in the Quran. The Quran is a book detailing the glory of God and the wonder of his creation, it is also a testament to his mercy and justice. It is not a history book, a story book, or a scientific textbook, although it does contain all of those genres and more. The Quran is God's greatest gift to humanity, it is a book like no other, for it contains the answers to the mysteries of life. It answers the questions and asks us to look beyond materialism and see that this life is little more than a transient stop on the way to everlasting life. Islam gives a clear aim and purpose to life. And I, God, created not the jinn and humankind, except to worship me, alone. Quran 51 56. Thus it is the most important book and Muslims have no doubt that it is exactly the same today as it was when it was first revealed to Prophet Muhammad, may God praise him. When we ask those most important questions, we want to be sure that the answers we receive are the truth. Knowing that the answers are coming from a book which is the unchanged word of God, gives comfort and solace. When God revealed the Quran, he promised to preserve it. The words we read today are the same as those memorized and written down by the companions of Prophet Muhammad. It is we who have sent down the remembrance, i.e. the Quran, and surely, we will guard it from corruption. 
I alone revealed this Quran to the heart of Muhammad, peace be upon him, as a reminder for people. I will guard the Quran from anything being added to it or subtracted from it, or anything in it being exchanged or altered. Quran 15-9 2. True happiness can be found in Islam. Rejoice and be happy, remain positive and be at peace. This is what Islam teaches us, for all God's commandments aim to bring happiness to the individual. The key to happiness is in understanding and worshipping God. This worship serves as a reminder of him and keeps us always conscious of him and hence we stay away from evil, committing injustices and oppression. It elevates us to being righteous and of good character. By following his commands, we lead a life that guides us to the best in all our affairs. When we lead such a meaningful life, then and only then are we able to see happiness all around us, at any given moment and even on the darkest of times. It is even there in the touch of a hand, in the smell of rain or newly mown grass, it is in a warm fire on a cold night or a cool breeze on a hot day. Simple pleasures can make our hearts truly happy because they are manifestations of God's mercy and love. The nature of the human condition means that amongst great sorrow can be moments of joy and sometimes in moments of despair we can find an anchor in the things that bring us happiness. Prophet Muhammad said, Indeed amazing are the affairs of a believer. They are all for his benefit. If he is granted ease then he is thankful, and this is good for him. And if he is afflicted with a hardship, he perseveres, and this is good for him, so he Muslim. 3. In Islam we can easily communicate with God at any time of day or night. Every member of the human race is born innately knowing that God is one. However those who do not know how to communicate with God or establish a relationship with him tend to find their existence puzzling and sometimes even distressing. Learning to communicate with God and worshipping him gives life a whole new meaning. According to Islam, God is accessible at any time and in any place. We need only call on him and he will answer the call. Prophet Muhammad advised us to call on God often. He told us that God said. I am just as my slave thinks I am, i.e. I am able to do for him what he thinks I can do for him, and I am with him if he remembers me. If he remembers me in himself, I too, remember him in myself, and if he remembers me in a group of people, I remember him in a group that is better than they. And if he comes one span nearer to me, I go one cubit nearer to him, and if he comes one cubit nearer to me, I go a distance of two outstretched arms nearer to him. And if he comes to me walking, I go to him running, Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih Muslim. In the Quran God says, Remember me and I will remember you. So, remember Allah with your hearts and your whole beings, and he will remember you with approval and protection, for you are rewarded according to what you do. Also, be grateful to Allah for the blessings he has given you, and do not be ungrateful by denying them or using them in prohibited ways. Quran 2 152 Believers call on God in any language, at any time and in any place. They supplicate to him, and give thanks. Muslims also pray in a more ritualized way five times every day and interestingly the Arabic word for prayer is Salah, which means a connection. Muslims are connected to God and can communicate with him easily. We are never alone or far from God's mercy, forgiveness, and love. 4. Islam gives us real peace. The words Islam, Muslim and Salam, peace, all come from the Arabic root word sa, la, ma. It denotes peace, security, and safety. When a person submits to the will of God he or she experiences an innate sense of security and peacefulness. Salam is a descriptive word that entails more than tranquility and calmness, it also encompasses the concepts of safety, security and submission. In fact, Islam in the complete sense means submission to the one God who grants us safety, security, peace and harmony. This is real peace. Muslims greet each other with the words Assalamu alaikum. These Arabic words mean may God grant you protection and security, real and lasting peace. These brief Arabic words let Muslims know that they are among friends, not strangers. This greeting encourages believers to be a worldwide community unencumbered by tribal or nationalistic loyalties and bound together by peace and unity. Islam itself is inherently associated with inner peace and tranquility. And those who believed, in the oneness of God and his messengers and whatever they brought, and did righteous deeds, will be made to enter gardens under which rivers flow. 2. Dwell therein forever, i.e. in paradise, with the permission of their Lord. 
their greeting therein will be, Salaam. By contrast to the fate of the wrongdoers, Allah caused those who have faith and do good deeds to enter paradise with rivers flowing under its palaces and trees. They will dwell in it eternally in the presence of their Lord. They will greet one another, the angels will greet them and their Lord, may he be glorified, will greet them with peace. Quran 14:23. 5. Islam allows us to know God. The first principle and focal point of Islam is belief in one God, and the whole of the Quran is dedicated to this. It speaks directly about God and his essence, names, attributes, and actions. Prayer connects us to God, however truly knowing and understanding the names and attributes of God is an important and unique opportunity, one that is only available in Islam. Those who do not make the effort to really know God may find the nature of their existence puzzling or even distressing. A Muslim is encouraged to remember God and be grateful to him and a person can do this by contemplating and understanding God's beautiful names and attributes. It is through this that we are able to know our Creator. God. None has the right to be worshipped but he. To him belong the best names. Allah, there is no being deserving of worship besides him. To him alone belong the perfect names that have reached the most complete level of perfection and excellence. Quran 22:8. And, all, the most beautiful names belong to God, so call on him by them, and leave the company of those who belie or deny, or utter impious speech against, his names. To Allah, glory be to him, belongs the most beautiful names which show his majesty and perfection. So use them to call on Allah when you ask for whatever you wish for. Also leave those who turn away from the truth of these names by assigning them to false deities, or denying them, or distorting their meanings. Allah will repay those who do this with a painful punishment. Quran 7 to 180. 6. Islam teaches us how to care for the environment. Islam recognizes that human beings are the custodians of the earth and all that is on it, including vegetation, animals, oceans, rivers, deserts, and fertile land. God provides us with the things we need to survive successfully and flourish, but we are obligated to care for them and preserve them for future generations. In 1986 Prince Philip the then President of the World Wildlife Fund invited the leaders of the world's five major religions to meet in the Italian city of Assisi. They met to discuss how faith could help save the natural world, the environment. What follows is from the Muslim statement in the Assisi declarations on nature. Muslims say that Islam is the middle path and we will be answerable for how we have walked this path, how we have maintained balance and harmony in the whole of creation around us. It is these values which led Muhammad, the prophet of Islam, to say, whoever plants a tree and diligently looks after it until it matures and bears fruit is rewarded. For all these reasons Muslims see themselves as having a responsibility towards the world and the environment, all of which are the creations of Allah. Unlike many other religions, Muslims do not have any specific festivals in which they give thanks for the harvest or the world. Instead they give thanks to Allah regularly for his creation. 7. Islam is respect. Another beautiful aspect of Islam is respect for humanity and the universe in which we live. Islam states clearly that it is the responsibility of each member of the human race to treat creation with respect, honor and dignity. The most deserving of respect is the Creator Himself and of course respect begins with loving and obeying His commandments. Total respect for God allows all the manners and high standards of morality that are inherent in Islam to flow into our lives and the lives of those around us. Because Islam binds respect to peace, love and compassion this involves respecting the honor, reputation and privacy of others. Respect involves staying completely away from the major sins of backbiting, lying, slander, and gossip. It means avoiding sins that will sow discord among the people or lead to destruction. Respect also includes loving for our brothers and sisters what we love for ourselves. It involves treating others the way we expect to be treated and the way we hope God will treat us, with compassion, love and mercy. Major sins put a barrier between humanity and God's mercy and cause all the torment, misery and evil in this world and the hereafter. God commands us to stay away from sin and to strive against our own destructive character flaws. We live in an age where we often demand respect from others but may not respect those around us. One beauty of Islam is that it allows us to regain lost respect by submitting wholeheartedly to the will of God. However if we do not understand how and why we surrender to God's will we cannot gain respect we want and need. 
Islam teaches us and God reminds us in the Quran that our sole purpose in life is to worship him. 8. The Equality of Men and Women Quran states that all believers are equal and that only righteous deeds elevate one person above another. Believers therefore have an immense respect for pious men and women and Islamic history also tells us that both men and women served and showed righteousness in all areas. A woman, like a man, is obligated to worship God and fulfill the duties upon her. It is thus required that every woman testify that there is none deserving worship but God, and that Muhammad, may God praise him, is his messenger, to pray, to give charity, to fast, and to perform the pilgrimage to God's house if she has the means and ability to do so. It is also required that every woman to believe in God, his angels, his scriptures, his messengers, the last day, and to believe in God's decree. It is also required that every woman worship God as if she sees him. And whoever does righteous good deeds, male or female, and is a, true, believer in the oneness of God such will enter paradise and not the least injustice, even to the size of a speck on the back of a date stone, will be done to them. Any person, whether male or female, who does good actions and has true faith in Allah will enter paradise, because they combined faith with practice. The reward of their actions will not be reduced in the least, not even to the extent of a speck on a date stone. Quran 4-124 Islam however recognizes that equality does not mean that men and women are the same. It takes into account their differences in physiology, nature and temperament. It is not a question of superiority or inferiority, rather a question of natural abilities and having different roles in life. The laws of Islam are just and fair and take these aspects into consideration. Men have been assigned the duty to work and provide for their family and women have been assigned the role of motherhood and homemaking. Islam states however that, that the roles are not exclusive nor are they inflexible. Women can work or serve society and men are able to take responsibility for their children or their household. It is interesting to note that where women choose to work the money they earn is their own however a man must provide financially for the whole family. 9. Humankind is able to regret past actions and reform. Muslims believe that all members of humankind are able to reform, in addition they believe that the possibility of successful reform is greater than the probability of failure. This belief is derived from the fact that God has given humankind the means to reform, not once but over and over again right up until close to the day of judgment. God sent messengers and prophets to each and every nation. Some we know from the Quran and the traditions of Prophet Muhammad, others are known only to God. And for every community or nation there is a messenger, when their messenger comes, the matter will be judged between them with justice, and they will not be wronged. Every past nation had a messenger sent to them. When the messenger delivered to them what he was instructed to, and they rejected him, it was judged justly between him and them. Allah saved the messenger out of his grace, and destroyed them through his justice, and they were not wronged in any way in the repayment for what they did. Quran 1047 God does not hold any person responsible until he has been clearly shown the right way. And we never punish until we have sent a messenger. Whoever is guided to faith, then the reward of his being guided is for his own good, and whoever goes astray, the punishment for his going astray is to his detriment. No soul carries the sin of another soul, nor do I ever punish a people until I establish proof against them by sending messengers to them. Quran 17:15. At the same time we are responsible to search for the truth and upon finding it we should accept it and reform our lives accordingly. The past bad actions can be left behind. There is no sin that cannot be forgiven. Say, O oh my servants who have transgressed against themselves, by sinning, do not despair of the mercy of God. Indeed, God forgives all sins. Indeed, it is he who is the forgiving, the merciful. Say, O messenger, to my servants who have gone beyond the limit against themselves by ascribing partners to Allah and committing sins. Do not lose hope of Allah's mercy and of his forgiveness for your sins. Allah forgives all the sins of those who repent to him. He is the forgiving towards the sins of those who repent and the merciful towards them. Quran 39:53. A person should take advantage of God's mercy by sincerely repenting for the past or if one is not a believer, by converting to the religion of Islam. Every person must work towards his salvation by combining faith, belief and action. 10. God loves beauty in all its forms. Prophet Muhammad said, No one will enter paradise who has an ant's weight of pride in his heart. A man said, What if a man likes his clothes to look good and his shoes to look good? 
He said. God is beautiful and loves beauty. Pride means denying the truth and looking down on people, Sahih so Muslim. Beauty is the opposite of ugliness. The beauty that exists in creation attests to God's beauty as well as his power. He who created beauty is the most entitled to beauty. And indeed paradise is adorned with beauty beyond imagining. God is beautiful and this is why the greatest of all pleasures in paradise is to look upon God's face. God says. Some, faces, that day, will be radiant, looking to their Lord. The faces of the people of faith and fortune on that day will be radiant with light. Dot looking at their Lord with enjoyment. Quran 75, 22-23 He refers to his names as being the most beautiful. And the most beautiful names belong to God, so call on him by them. Quran 7-180 Noted Islamic scholar Ibn al-Qaim, may Allah have mercy on him, had the following to say about beauty in Islam. God is to be acknowledged for beauty that bears no resemblance to anything else, and he is to be worshipped by means of the beauty which he loves in words, deeds and attitudes. He loves his slaves to beautify their tongues with the truth, to beautify their hearts with sincere devotion, love, repentance and trust in him, to beautify their faculties with obedience, and to beautify their bodies by showing his blessings upon them in their clothing and by keeping them pure and free of any filth, dirt or impurity, by removing the hairs which should be removed by circumcision, and by clipping the nails. Thus they recognize God through these qualities of beauty and seek to draw close to him through beautiful words, deeds and attitudes. They acknowledge him for the beauty which is his attribute and they acknowledge him for the beauty which is his attribute and they worship him through the beauty which he has prescribed and his religion. Alpha R apostrophe I dot D. 1 185. The Religion of Islam. The first thing that one should know and clearly understand about Islam is what the word Islam itself means. The religion of Islam is not named after a person as in the case of Christianity which was named after Jesus Christ, Buddhism after Gautama Buddha, Confucianism after Confucius, and Marxism after Karl Marx. Nor was it named after a tribe like Judaism after the tribe of Judah and Hinduism after the Hindus. Islam is the true religion of Allah and as such, its name represents the central principle of Allah's God's religion, the total submission to the will of Allah God. The Arabic word Islam means the submission or surrender of one's will to the only true God worthy of worship Allah and anyone who does so is termed a Muslim. The word also implies peace which is the natural consequence of total submission to the will of Allah. Hence, it was not a new religion brought by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, I in Arabia in the 7th century, but only the true religion of Allah re-expressed in its final form. Islam is the religion which was given to Adam, the first man and the first prophet of Allah, and it was the religion of all the prophets sent by Allah to mankind. The name of God's religion Islam was not decided upon by later generations of man. It was chosen by Allah himself and clearly mentioned in his final revelation to man. In the final book of Divine Revelation, the Quran, Allah states the following. This day have I perfected your religion for you, completed my favor upon you, and have chosen for you Islam as your religion. Quran 5-3 If anyone desires a religion other than Islam, submission to Allah, God, never will it be accepted of him. Whoever seeks a path other than that which Allah has endorsed, the path of surrendering, Islam, it will not be accepted from them by Allah. They will be of those who have lost their souls by entering the fire of hell. Quran 385. Abraham was not a Jew nor Christian, but an upright Muslim. Abraham was not a Jew or Christian in belief, but he was opposed to all false religions and obedient to Allah alone. He was also not one of those who ascribe partners to Allah, contrary to the idolaters of the Arabs, who claim to follow his belief. Quran 367. The Message of Islam. Since the total submission of one's will to Allah represents the essence of worship, the basic message of Allah's divine religion, Islam is the worship of Allah alone and the avoidance of worship directed to any person, place or thing other than Allah. Since everything other than Allah, the creator of all things is Allah's creation. It may be said that Islam, in essence calls man away from the worship of creation and invites him to worship only its creator. He is the only one deserving man's worship as it is only by his will that prayers are answered. You alone do we worship and from you alone do we seek help. 
We worship and obey none except you, we associate no one with you, and from you alone do we ask for help in all our affairs. All goodness is in your hand, and there is no helper except you. Quran 1-5. Elsewhere, in the final book of Revelation, the Quran, Allah also said. And your Lord says, Call on me and I will answer your prayer. O people, your Lord said, Call upon me alone and worship me alone, and do not associate any partner with me. Those who are too arrogant in worshipping me alone will enter the fire on the day of judgment, low and disgraced. Quran 4060. It is worth noting that the basic message of Islam is that Allah and his creation are distinctly different entities. Neither is Allah his creation or a part of it, nor is his creation him or a part of him. This might seem obvious, but, man's worship of creation instead of the creator is to a large degree based on ignorance of this concept. It is the belief that the essence of Allah is everywhere in his creation or that his divine being is always present in some aspects of his creation. Which has provided justification for the worship of creation though such worship may be called the worship of Allah through his creation. However, the message of Islam as brought by the prophets of Allah is to worship only Allah and to avoid the worship of his creation either directly or indirectly. In the Quran Allah clearly states. For we assuredly sent amongst every people a prophet, with the command, Worship me and avoid false gods. We had sent to every previous nation a messenger instructing his nation to worship Allah alone, and leave the worship of others beside him such as idols. Satans etc. Some of them were guided by Allah and had faith in him, while others rejected Allah and went against his messenger so he did not guide them and they deserved misguidance. So travel through the earth to see for yourselves what the end result of the deniers was after the punishment and destruction came upon them. Quran 1636. The Universality of Islam. Within the central principle of Islam and in its definition, the surrender of one's will to God, lies the roots of Islam's universality. Whenever man comes to the realization that Allah is one and distinct from his creation, and submits himself to Allah, he becomes a Muslim in body and spirit and is eligible for paradise. Thus, anyone at any time in the most remote region of the world can become a Muslim, a follower of God's religion, Islam. By merely rejecting the worship of creation and by turning to Allah, God, alone. It should be noted however, that the recognition of and submission to Allah requires that one chooses between right and wrong and such a choice implies accountability. Man will be held responsible for his choices, and, as such, he should try his utmost to do good and avoid evil. The ultimate good being the worship of Allah alone and the ultimate evil being the worship of his creation along with or instead of Allah. This fact is expressed in the final revelation as follows. Those who have faith from the nation of Muhammad, peace be upon him, and from the communities who came before him, from the Jews, the Christians and Sabians, said to be a group who followed prophets who were of the faith of Abraham, peace be upon him, will have their reward with their Lord. They will not fear what awaits them in the afterlife, nor grieve over what happened to them on earth. This was the case before the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was sent. Now his message of Islam, devotion and dedication to Allah, is the only way of life accepted by Allah, as he said, whoever seeks a path other than Islam, it will not be accepted from him Surah at Imran, 85. Quran 262. If the Jews had practiced what was in the Torah, and the Christians practiced what was in the Gospel, and if all of them had practiced what was revealed to them in the Quran, then I would have made the means of provision easy for them by sending down rain and growing vegetation. From amongst the people of the Scripture are those who are moderate and firm on the truth. But the actions of many of them are evil, because they do not have faith in what was brought by Muhammad, peace be upon him. Quran 566. Recognition of Allah. The question which arises here is, how can all people be expected to believe in Allah given their varying backgrounds, societies and cultures? For people to be responsible for worshipping Allah they all have to have access to knowledge of Allah. The final revelation teaches that all mankind have the recognition of Allah imprinted on their souls, a part of their very nature with which they are created. In the Quran 172-173, Allah explained that when he created Adam, he caused all of Adam's descendants to come into existence and took a pledge from them saying, Am I not your Lord? To which they all replied, Yes, we testify to it. Allah then explained why he had all of mankind bear witness that he is their creator and only true God worthy of worship. 
he said, that was in case you, mankind, should say on the day of resurrection, verily we were unaware of all this, that is to say, we had no idea that you Allah, were our God. No one told us that we were only supposed to worship you alone. Allah went on to explain that it was also in case you should say, certainly it was our ancestors who made partners, with Allah, and we are only their descendants. Will you then destroy us for what those liars did? Thus, every child is born with a natural belief in Allah and an inborn inclination to worship him alone called in Arabic the Fitra. Mention, O Muhammad, when your Lord took from the loins of the children of Adam their descendants and had them acknowledge, bearing witness to his Lordship. Making it part of their innate nature to acknowledge that he created them and that he is their Lord Fitra. He said to them, Am not your Lord? And they replied, Yes, we bear witness. Allah said, I asked you this question so that you would not deny the proofs of Allah on the day of judgment, saying that you did not have any knowledge of it. Lest you might say that your ancestors were the ones who broke the promise, taking others as partners with Allah, and that you were just following them. In this way, you would say, O oh our Lord. Will you destroy us for what our ancestors did, making our actions worthless because of taking others as partners with you? Indeed we carry no sin because we were just following our ancestors and had no knowledge. Ali apostrophe Raf colon 172 to 173. Prophets were sent, as was earlier mentioned, to every nation and tribe to support man's natural belief in Allah and man's inborn inclination to worship him as well as to reinforce the divine truth in the daily signs revealed by Allah. Although, in most cases, much of the Prophet's teachings became distorted, portions remained which point out right and wrong. Consequently, every soul will be held to account for its belief in Allah and its acceptance of the religion of Islam, the total submission to the will of Allah. We pray to Allah, the Exalted, to keep us on the right path to which He has guided us, and to bestow on us a blessing from Him, He is indeed the most merciful. Praise and gratitude be to Allah, the Lord of the worlds, and peace and blessings be on Prophet Muhammad, his family, his companions, and those who rightly follow them. Dr. B. Phillips